Welcome back to Barron Public Library's Friday Read Aloud. Next week on the stream calendar, we are taking a look at flying machines. And today, we're going to take a little adventure on a flying machine you may have never seen before. I hope you enjoy it. The Flying Hockey Stick by Jolly Roger Bradford. Barnaby Jones was a boy who had wanted something for years and years. He wanted more than anything to be able to fly like a bird. Ever since he could remember, he had been trying to make some sort of machine that would get him off the ground, if only for a few feet. He made a glider, but it wouldn't glide. He made a helicopter, but it wouldn't go up only down. Barnaby had tried various combinations of orange crates, balloons, old boards, washing machine parts, and a lot of other things, but he couldn't seem to come up with exactly the right combination. But, as usually happens when one keeps trying and doesn't give up, he finally found a way. Yes, one day, Barnaby hit on exactly the right parts. One hockey stick, an electric fan, his mother's umbrella, and an extension cord. He taped them all together, and they looked like this. He called his invention the flying hockey stick. All he had to do to start it was to plug the cord into the socket in his bedroom and switch on the fan. The switch had two settings, slow and fast. If he wanted to fly slowly, he switched the fan to slow. If he wanted to go faster, he merely moved the switch. He soon realized, of course, that in order to fly any great distance, he would have to have a very long cord. So he went all over the neighborhood, borrowing extension cords. Finally, he had so many strung together that it seemed to him that he would be able to fly around the world. After testing the machine thoroughly in his backyard, he was ready to make his first long flight. Perhaps he would fly around the world, if it didn't take too long. His mother made him a lunch of peanut butter sandwiches and a pickle and kissed him goodbye. The flying hockey stick worked perfectly. He switched the fan to slow and climbed smoothly into the air. The extension cords unwound smoothly off the back of the hockey sticks as he flew along. And oh, what a thrill it was! He soared to the top of the huge oak tree and peeked at a family of birds in their nest. He waved at a man in a window of a tall building and surprised some people in an airplane. Then Barnaby Jones spotted some smoke rising in the distance and flew toward it. Soon he could see that it was coming from a burning building in a nearby town. Switching the fan to fast, he was soon at the building. In a window on the top floor was an old lady. Some firemen were trying to reach her, but their ladders weren't long enough. Help, she cried. Save me. Barnaby flew up to her window. I can't believe my eyes, but I'm glad to see you, said the old lady. Please come aboard, ma'am, said Barnaby politely. The poor woman had no choice, for the flames were getting closer. Putting on her Sunday hat, she climbed onto the hockey stick behind Barnaby Jones, and they zoomed away. This is quite a contraption you have here, young man, said the old lady. After a while, she added, in fact, this is the most fun I've had in years. She enjoyed flying through the air so much that she decided to go with Barnaby on his trip. They headed out across the ocean. They saw a flying fish, and swimming fish. They saw a walrus on a rock. They saw a great whale surface and send up a spout of water. 
Flying lower to see the whale, they spotted something else in the water. It was a man clinging to a board. Help, he cried. Save me. Barnaby flew down to the man struggling in the water. I can't believe my eyes, but I'm glad to see you, said the man. They hauled him aboard behind the old lady. He was the captain of a ship who had fallen overboard at night without being noticed. The captain asked if he could go with them on their trip around the world. I can help with navigation, he said. Barnaby didn't know what navigation was, but he liked the captain and welcomed him on the trip. They flew on across the wide ocean until they sighted land in the distance. It looked like an island covered with dense jungle, surrounded by a sandy beach. As they came closer, they saw someone dash out of the jungle onto the beach. He was yelling and waving his arms. And no wonder! He was being chased by some very hungry-looking lions. Hail! Save me! Once more, Barnaby Jones pointed the hockey stick downward and zoomed toward the ground. Watch out, son, cried the captain. We're almost out of cord. Oh, dear, cried the old lady. Hang on, yelled Barnaby. Barnaby zoomed in front of the lions, and at that moment they reached the very end of the cord and stopped with a sudden jerk. Thanks to the captain's warning, they didn't tumble off, but the old lady lost her hat and Barnaby's lunch went spilling out onto the ground. The lions, racing at full speed, tripped over the cord. Heads over tails they went, in a snarling tangle of teeth and tails and claws. I can't believe my eyes, but I'm glad to see you, said the man on the beach. And without waiting to be asked, he jumped onto the hockey stick behind the captain. He was a hunter who had lost his gun in the jungle and then met a whole family of hungry lions. Barnaby Jones wheeled the hockey stick around and up into the air. Looking down, they could see the lions eating Barnaby's peanut butter sandwiches. The hunter was glad they weren't eating him. You came along just in time, he exclaimed. Where were you bound for? Well, we were going around the world, but I guess we need a little more cord, said Barnaby. The travelers agreed that it would be best to return home where they would all collect extension cords. Then we can try again, said the little old lady who had really enjoyed riding on the flying hockey stick. She and the captain and the hunter were very grateful to Barnaby Jones for he had saved their lives. When they got back, the old lady promised to bake cookies for Barnaby every Tuesday. The sea captain made him a model ship, and the hunter gave him a huge moose head. Now, there are some people who will tell you that Barnaby Jones just dreamed his adventure. But if you go over to his house any Tuesday, he always has plenty of cookies. And there on the mantel is a beautiful model ship in a bottle. And over the mantel hangs the biggest stuffed moose head you ever saw in your whole life. Check out the stream calendar on the Barron Public Library website. The March calendar has a whole week of activities about flight. Try them out. Learn what you can. And then you decide, was it a dream or a real adventure? Until next time, this is Miss Patricia. Keep reading.